Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? I am vaccinated and caffeinated. Things there are going go. well. It's Can't complain. A, it's, uh, it's a bonus episode this yeah, week of the podcast. One. We're doing two yeah. this week, but this is a, a fascinating guest and a fascinating topic. But before Very we timely. get in, but but before we get into that, I gotta pull up my notes here <laughs> that I'm stalling. see how quickly you can do I'm this. Stalling, he's, he's pulling it stalling. up. There it is. And come on, yeah, open up. There it is. Open up. Why is that? There we go. There we there go. go. So quick it's shout good. out to Bruce Hypebot Bands in Town. We appreciate so much everything you do. And of course, uh, discmakers.com. Thank you for your continued sponsorship. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments can be so small that selling products like CD, vinyl, T-shirts at gigs and online has become such an important income generator. For every CD you sell at a gig, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. That's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even T-shirts. So we got a special offer for you. Head over to discmakers.com. Place an order for 100 or more CDs. Come on, you're going to sell 100 CDs if you're starting to go back out on the road and do shows because that's where you sell your CDs. You're going to need them. Um, place an order for a hundred or more CDs from disc makers. And when you check out, use the promo code free biz, all one word, and you will save up to $150 in shipping costs. Uh, Jay, who's joining us today? We have the head of music for the platform Twitch, Tracy Chan. And as you said, it is timely. It's happening uh, Twitch is a thing. And if you don't know about Twitch, you better find out. You got to explore it. And this is an incredible conversation with Tracy. Yep. Let it roll and we'll see you at the end. Today, we're joined by Tracy Chan. Tracy is the head of music for Twitch. Tracy, thanks for taking time out of your busy day to chat with us. I'm excited to dig in. Good to be with you guys. Yes. Thank you so, so much. So, so, so twi- Twitch, Twitch is... <laughs> Twitch is the hot thing right now, isn't it? <laughs> we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, activity and interest, um, both from musicians, um, you know, really looking to connect with their fans and make a little bit of money. And then also just fans, you know, I think the pandemic really, you know, have put a, put a highlight on just like how important music and artistry and just connecting, you know, with human beings is. Um, and, you know, I think Twitch has been just a really great place for people, not only just to like rediscover that, you know, bit of culture that we've been missing, you know, through the pandemic, but it's just actually opened up a bunch of new ways that artists and fans can connect that really hasn't existed before. Um, so, you know, lots of exciting stuff going on. Well, Twitch has been around for a while. Twitch isn't necessarily new, but I think the perception has changed a lot. I've been fortunate to have a couple of artists doing pretty well on on Twitch for a while, but I think the common misconception was that this is a gaming platform. This is for other interests outside of music, but it's a strong, robust music uh, community. Can you speak to that just a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, I think um, we just recently celebrated Twitch's 10 year anniversary. So you're right. Twitch has been around for a while. Um, And of course, you know, Twitch started its um, roots in in the gaming uh, kind of communities. Right. I I will add a quick aside. So I used to live in uh, San I'm in Sausalito, but I used to live in San Francisco, North Beach. Uh And I took the cable car to work every morning and Jordan TV, which was Justin, the, just Justin. There you go. Justin, <laughs> yeah. Which is what Twitch grew from. I yep. remember taking the cable car past his apartment, like a second story <laughs> apartment. It was just like, it, you know, yeah. it was, it was just, it's been so cool to watch how it's, it's birth and 
developed in found found its purpose and then you know amazon comes in and uh, you know it's it's amazing to watch that stuff from from its literal birth yeah and it's just continued to grow and i think you know what's really been exciting about twitch in general is is you know if you abstract away just the content it is literally just creators and fans you know building a community and you know layered in once you have that community you know those fans supporting those creators you know with um you know financial support which has yeah. just been incredible to see and I, I think you know really what's been amazing is is it actually works really really well for music because you know the dynamics of getting access and having the ability to have a conversation with fans you know not just like a comment here and there but really just getting to know the fans just as well as you know the fans getting to know the artist well let's like, that's what really quickly special. tracy yeah. because you say that but i don't know if the audience really understands the level of engagement so i can just speak to you know let's take uh, you know one of my favorite artists on on twitch is jay gregory and when you go on there he's writing a song with you he's talking performing with you and he looks into the chat and says oh tracy's here today hey tracy thanks for coming by you know how's your dog doing it's a level of engagement that you don't really see on other platforms can you talk about that a little bit because it's really unique yeah, well, I think, you know, what's really special about Twitch is it is live and interactive, which I know are buzzwords, but really kind of the trick of Twitch is, is that the audience and chat actually affects what's happening on screen. And mm-hmm. like you said, Jay, you know, it could be, you know, someone doing a shout out, you know, hey, you know, welcome back to my stream. Or if you do a subscription, you know, getting a direct thanks um, for, you know, supporting that artist. Um, But there's other things, you know, we have uh, musicians, you know, saying like, hey, you know, I'll play whatever song you want. Um, There's, you know, uh, the ability for you to kind of, you know, trigger, um, you know, uh, graphics on the screen, you know, as as a, a participant in chat. There's other, you know, cool things that artists do like hey, I've got smart lights in my room. So if you do a certain thing or the community kind of rallies around an action, like it'll change or kind of, you know, pulse with patterns or things like that, um, which is really, really kind of awesome to see. And then I think you're right. There's kind of the what's happening on Twitch, which is super special. And then there's kind of that deeper level of actually that live and interactive piece is moving over to the music creation process specifically. So great example is Mike Shinoda, you know, the, his first kind of year on Twitch kind of during the pandemic, he was like, I'm just going to make my EPs on Twitch. And so, you know, with his community, he asked them for input, like, Hey, what's, what's the song today? Like, what's the mood of the song today? Are we like super energetic? Is this kind of slow? Are we sad or happy? You know, that sort of thing. Um, and he, he literally created three EPs with his community which, which is kind of amazing the way that I think about it is it's literally, you know, that special moment where you can take a fan and pull them into the studio. It's mm-hmm. that at scale. Yes. And, you know, folks like Mike, it's like they are, you know, he was going on, he's going on every day, you know, every uh, weekday. And so because of that, you actually can get to know who the fans are. You recognize those screen names who are popping up every day or giving you good suggestions. And the tools within Twitch show you like this person gives a lot of gift subscriptions or they do a lot of cheers with bits, which is our virtual currency where you can kind of do direct donations and things like that. And so you kind of get those extra visual cues on top of just, again, getting to know the the people within chat. Um, And then secondarily, like you mentioned, the community of Twitch is amazing. Like, and it is such a tight knit group. Um, So, you know, the first year Mike kind of made his own um, music. The second year he's like, okay, and now I'm just going to produce a bunch of musicians, you know, who are in my community and have Twitch channels and things like that. And I think he's up to, you know, over 30 tracks that he's produced. So again, just that interactive nature and the kind of close knit community um, of, of bring your fans kind of into that creative process. It's literally changing how music's created, which is. Well, the only, the only thing I would add to that really quickly is when you're talking about the, uh, the thing that really surprised me about the community is I started going on and watching Hallocene and finding Elysium and Jay Gregory and their fans started to get to know me. And next thing you know, they're like, Oh, and they're gifting me subscriptions or, I mean, I've been embraced into these uh, communities 
And I got to tell you, I've never really experienced that before Twitch. And it's really powerful. Well, and I think, you know, part of um, the magic of that is that um, artists kind of share communities. You know, oh, you know, if you like Halocene, you're, you're going to like, you know, finding Elysium. And we have mechanisms. So we have this feature called the raid, yes. where once you're done with your stream, you can literally kind of shift your audience over to someone else's stream. And, you know, a good mental model of that is kind of like the opening act. Um, or, you know, if you have kind of a... a, a band that's kind of your friends that you want to share your audience with um you can literally do that and that's just a great discovery mechanism so you know your fans can you know discover new music um because your community tends to be tight-knit you know they're pulling in their friends as well and so there's this kind of magic of twitch where you know you have i mean these are literally truly communities in the sense of the word where it's not just like you know the fan, a fan is talking to an artist. They're talking to each other. They're developing inside jokes. Um, part of the kind of subscription to a artist channel unlocks what we call emotes, which are custom emojis specific to a channel. And so you can imagine communities kind of create memes. Um, there's this artist named Tyler Lebs. Um, he has this. Uh, he does this um, amazing song where kind of during the bridge. You know, the, the chat literally just spams like these emotes. Um, and it's just like one of the things they do. So when, you know, new community members come in, they're like, wait, what's going on? I want to do that too. And that kind of creates incentive loop for, you know, them to subscribe and participate in that community as well. Tracy, let me let me ask you, as, as somebody who, you know, I've, I've started to take this podcast and my other po podcast and set them up on Twitch and even though they're pre-recorded, I'm doing live streams to Twitch. The challenge I'm finding, and I th and I think artists are also finding this, is you've got all these communities of fans. You've got fans on Facebook pages and Facebook groups and Instagram and TikTok and you know YouTube and they're everywhere. The challenge is how do I now get them to move over? to a new platform, Twitch. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm running into is fans are creatures of habit, basically. It's like, okay, yeah, it sounds cool, but I'm comfortable. I log into my Facebook once a day and I watch my live stream there and then I'll go check you out on Instagram, but I don't need to go follow you here and here and here. Do you have some suggestions, some advice on how to get your fans to move, not necessarily leave a platform, because I don't think they would necessarily leave Facebook to come to Twitch, but how to get them to add Twitch into their daily or weekly destinations now? Yeah, so there's a couple of suggestions here, and I think there's a mental model as well to think through. So kind of starting with that mental model, I think what makes Twitch super, super special is that um, because it is a live service, um, the way to think about it is, you know, your casual fans will, you know, they will kind of consume and interact with you in a, you know, at, in a time frame that's convenient to them, your true fans will interact with you when it's convenient to you as the artist. So that's kind of, you know, let's put a pin on that because I think that that's a, a really important point. Um, and I think kind of, you know, that's where your true fans are going to be there to support you by pulling in other fans, by, you know, contributing financially, subscribing to your channel, giving you cheers and bits and things like that. And, you know, that is kind of a mental shift from what we think about the music industry and social in general, where it's like you need the millions of things, you know, millions of followers or streams or likes or that sort of thing to be successful. What we're showing on Twitch is it's actually those passionate, dedicated fans. Um, they're the ones who are, you know, your biggest fans, your financial supporters, your biggest marketers. Um, so I think kind of you don't need scale to be successful. And we can kind of talk through um, what that looks like on Twitch. Um, now, in terms of, you know, how do you kind of get all of those fans and find where your true fans are across, you know, the social platforms and video platforms, streaming, et cetera. I think, you know, the way that we think about it is, is, you know, just no platform should be the center of your world. In fact, you know, you should try to find 
the fans wherever they are, whether they're on TikTok or Instagram or wherever they may be. And so there are a couple of things that can be very, very helpful in terms of helping that audience, you know, come to you, especially kind of those true fans. So first, the most important thing is, is have a regular schedule, you know, similar to live. Um, you know, if you're thinking about a live show, um, if you were kind of doing a live show at a venue, like there's a preset time people are preparing and, you know, they're, they're organizing their schedule so they can attend, you know, your live show or your live stream. You know, you could imagine if like, Hey, at some point I'm going to go play the Fillmore in San Francisco. Like, people can't plan around that. So I think a, a regular schedule that's predictable um, that, you know, you can advertise, you know, across the different social platforms of I'm going to be live on Twitch at this specific time on, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever, you know, the right cadence is, you know, that helps quite a bit. And I think part of that is, is that helps build the community as well, because there's the people that you're going to be pulling in as well as, you know, the existing people on the service who just happen to be there. And, you know, People tend to be, to your point, creatures of habit. And so, you know, they'll go on to Twitch, you know, on Thursdays or whatever it is um, and kind of browse around who's live. So regular schedule probably is the most important thing. Two is, is again, activating your social audience, letting them know, you know, this is when I'm going to be live. There are other strategies that people use, like, you know, you could go live on other services and say like, hey, you know, we're pulling the party over to Twitch. Um, and so... Those are kind of a lot of the ways that you can start to activate your audience. I think the the beauty is, is once you kind of get people hooked, and then again, like Jay said, like once you, once the fans know that, that the artist knows that they are there, mm -hmm. that's when the magic and stickiness happens. And so it's not, you know, I think it's really kind of a buildup over time. And it, once you kind of get that, uh, critical mass of community, which, you know, what we're saying is, is it can be, you know, a couple dozen fans to low hundreds. Um, that's when all the magic happens. Do yeah. you, do you, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of different streaming platforms out there. Do you recommend that to build up your Twitch audience and engagement to not do the same type of stream that you do on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube that you've got to keep Twitch unique, meaning the content you're streaming is unique. Like, okay, great. You're, you're, you're in the studio and you're, you're bringing them in and live streaming the creation of a song. Don't do the same thing on Facebook live only keep it to Twitch. I mean, is that, is that some good advice? Well, let me just interject really quickly, Tracy, because I'd like you to yeah. answer that question. Yeah. But just comment on the fact that Twitch is really more, you know, computer based versus portable device based. Mm -hmm. I find that the quality is like so much higher than anything I see on Facebook and even a lot of things on YouTube. So as you address Michael's question, can you also address that, that it's really not a iPhone kind of thing on, uh, on Facebook? Yeah. So I, yeah, I think those two questions are highly, highly related. So I think on Twitch, because it is a primary desktop experience, um, the way to think about Twitch is more long form content versus the snackable two to five minute kind of clips. Um, and so quality does very much matter, but the trade-off that you get is, is you get people engaging, you know, basically hours with you um, depending on, you know, how long you're streaming. So I think that that's an important bit of it. So where that kind of intersects with your question, Michael is, is, you know, quality does matter. And so, you know, uh, if, if it's kind of a, I mean, basically you want to be kind of putting your best foot forward um, in terms of quality, in terms of your setup, um, you know, your equipment, things like that. Um, in terms of the actual content in and of itself, um, it depends on the artist and what they're actually trying to achieve is what I'd say. What I'd say is, is that on Twitch, there is an expectation that, you know, what works really well is when the creator is talking to the audience and, you know, changing what they're doing and, you know, really kind of affecting the outcomes uh, because, you know, that's what the Twitch audience generally expects. Um, that may be different on other services. Um, and so it's less about kind of 
the content in and of itself, but I think the approach of how you engage with the audience. Because again, you know, we have uh, what we call overlays. Um, and so you can, you know, trigger things that happen on screen that may not be a thing on other services. Um, and so, you know, incorporating kind of the dynamics that really kind of make the audience feel a part of the stream, that's what is super, super successful. And, you know, different services will kind of have different hooks. You know, some will give yeah. go live notifications if you're a follower, yeah. some will, you know, yeah. um, do other things. So yeah. I think it's it's less about do something specific on Twitch, but just make sure the community feels super involved. Yeah, to me, it's a little bit different approach because they seem like they're longer shows. Like some of these artists will do two, three hours, three times a week. And it's different for, for everyone. Um, but I was, you and I had talked Tracy a little bit about that article that our friend Will Page wrote called mm -hmm. Twitch's Rockonomics. And if you haven't read that uh, for those who are listening, it's a great piece on Twitch. But one of the things that really jumped out at me about that, and I've got it up is the weekly hours a uh, weekly average user, you know, and, and that is just stunning how long people spend on Twitch compared to like Spotify, it's six hours a week, TikToks, it's two hours a week, YouTube, less than six hours a week. But with Twitch, it's almost 16 hours a week. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And I think part of that, and I'd love for you to comment on this, is these, these, musicians these bands these artists are creating like their own little television talk show and variety show and there's lights and there's all sorts of great things but it's not just a quick little 15 minute 30 minute live stream somewhere it's hours yeah well and i think the, I, that's exactly right that's the right way to think about it is you know this is your show and you do what's you know authentic to you. And so for some artists, it'll be, you know, I'm going to perform live, um, you know, songs that my audience chooses. For some artists, it's going to be, well, I'm already producing or writing, like, let's do it with the audience. And I'm going to pull you into the studio. For some, uh, from some artists, it's, you know, I'm going to play video games, um, because, you know, that's a way that I want to connect with my audience. And so there's just lots of different ways and formats that you can connect with your audience. It really kind of depends on, you know, what you're trying to achieve there. Um, and so that's what's just super awesome, I think, about um, the communities that, you know, are, are fueling kind of the artists on Twitch, is that, you know, it's, it's really up to the artists and the fans on what that looks like over time. And again, the best kind of types of streams is let, let the artists um, and fans kind of create together. It's not just a pure viewing experience. Um, whereas, you know, other things where it's less interactive, like, you know, you could bail mid, you know, content, you could, you know, kind of skip through things um, or it's, again, it's just kind of what's convenient to you. But again, once you have, you know, a little bit of agency, you know, as a fan on what's happening, that's where people just stick around because they feel so invested in what's happening, you know, on screen with the artist, that sort of thing. Tracy, one of the big things that's really important, obviously to musicians is copyrights. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's something that obviously, you know, if you've been in the YouTube world for a long time, you're used to how YouTube is dealing with it. Facebook has been slowly rolling out their own system on how they're dealing with copyright of performances. Can you talk to how Twitch is addressing that? So, you know, what, what I don't hear a lot, but there's definitely musicians that have those frustrations of, Oh, I did something and it was my own music and the so-and-so platform took it down, you know, and, 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 you know, they obviously don't completely understand how the copyright system works on the platforms, but can you talk to how Twitch is addressing copyright management, copyright protection? What do artists need to know when they come in there and think, I'm just going to play my album. I'm going to stream my album. Can they do that? What will happen and along with that, what are you doing to prevent other people from doing that who don't have the rights to do that performance? 
Yeah. So there's a couple of elements to this. I think first and foremost is to think about just what Twitch is and what makes it work. And that kind of informs our approach to copyright overall. So, you know, over 90% of um, consumption on Twitch is live. It's live, 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 um, because again, that's where interaction happens. That's where monetization happens. And that's what makes Twitch, you know, quite frankly, just super special. Um, and so, you know, with that in mind, you know, the, the kind of balance of the, uh, you know, under 10% is, you know, with our video on demand products, like um, just VODs, um, highlights, clips, and things like that. And so that's kind of first and foremost, um, you know, our approach there. As such, you know, as it relates to music, just kind of like a live venue, um, we've worked with PROs um, so that we have public performing rights. So ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, GMR, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the global um, uh, folks, because, you know, we recognize whether it's music uh, specific content or uh, content, you know, that has incidental music in it, you know, we want to do the responsible thing and make sure that publishers and songwriters are paid. And because it's 90% of our service, you know, that's, um, you know, the bulk of um, where we believe, you know, the copyrights yeah. are. Yeah. Um, second, you know, when it comes to kind of just general, like, how can you use music or not? Um, we have kind of a robust set of community guidelines and music specific guidelines. And generally kind of, you know, the stance that we have is, hey, you know, you are in full control of your content. You should be mindful of copyrights because, you know, at our core, we are a creator first service. And so we say, you know, here's kind of, you know, some general rules of the roads to be considered. Like you should have the rights to your content, whether, um, whether, uh, but when you when you include it, you know, yeah. whether it's a gaming stream or a music stream or whatever it may yeah. be. Um, and then we kind of take additional measures kind of um, beyond, you know, what's required of us as a user generated content platform. So, you know, we adhere to the DMCA, we kind of do the notice and takedown system, but we take the extra step. Um, so we use um, services like Audible Magic, where if we detect music, we will mute it out because, you know, uh, the video on demand, it's it's low consumption, not a lot of, um, you know, because we're primarily video game service, not a lot of um, videos have music in them. And so we kind of put it through that system to just make sure it doesn't get involved and we mute it out, similar to other services. So generally kind of, you know, we we try to do the responsible thing with the PRO deals because our business is primarily live. And then as it relates to, you know, the different set of rights that VOD requires, we kind of do the... Uh, above and beyond from there and just educate the community. And I think to your point, Michael, like you know, what we're trying to do continually is just making sure that the community is just generally reminded because, you know, as more people come onto the service, you know, we want to make sure that everyone is using music responsibly. Yeah. So, so I'm, go ahead, Mike. I, mean, I was going to say, so to that point, I mean, really specific here, Yeah. could an artist s start up a, a, a live event and live stream their new album and just have a listening party with their fans and, and engage with them as they're listening to their album. Is that feasible or is that something where they're going to get, Oh, Hey, this is a copyright because your label TuneCore, the orchard, whoever is administering that copyright now says we have the rights to it. Yeah. So, I mean, it this is where it gets a little bit difficult and where we kind of as a service don't have a ton of agency because ultimately the copyright is between the artist and either, you know, a label or a distributor or whomever. And so really, you know, that's why we give the guidance of, you know, make sure you have those conversations of what you can and can't do. You know, I think, you know, what we've seen is a lot of uh, labels really want artists to do that, right? And we've worked with a ton of labels, majors, indies across the board of like, let's do these listening parties. Let's do a release concert. Um, because, you know, again, what's special about Twitch is that live element and being able to have the fans, you know, ask questions or, you know, give context or that sort of thing. And so, you know, really it's the, we, the best advice we can give is, is, you know, make sure you work with, you know, the, 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 uh, the partners right. that you have kind of in the, yeah, yeah. the industry, um, because, you know, this can be really, really powerful. And I mean, we all know the stories of like, lots of mistakes happen where, you know, the right hand doesn't talk to the left hand and yep. these things kind of happen, um, which is, you know, something that, you know, Twitch can't really solve, um, yeah. but we can, you know, give that guidance. Um, yeah. But I think that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's there's really been a, good advice. Yeah. 
Um, I, 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 you know, this leads beautifully into my next question, which is about monetization. And you've already yeah. touched on some of these things, but just kind of in a nutshell, I'm a new artist. I'm developing yeah. a following on Twitch. I've got people coming to my uh, events, my live streams. Things are going well. How do I, as an artist, monetize that audience? Yep. So the first step is, is um, in order to monetize and get access to our monetization tools, you have to be a Twitch affiliate. And we have some qualifications, like you have to stream a certain number of hours, you have to get a certain number of followers, things like that. Um, and that's, you know, really to just make sure that, you know, as we open up our monetization tools, you know, you're taking streaming seriously. And that's across the board, whether you're a musician or a gamer or you know, someone who has a talk show, things like that. So that's kind of the first step. Um, and the qualifications are relatively low. Um, it's the, you've gotten started. Um, so uh, we have a couple of monetization products. So they're kind of in two buckets uh, or three buckets. Um, so the first bucket is um, channel subscriptions. So you as a fan can subscribe directly to an artist channel and the money goes directly to the artist. You know, there's a rev share with Twitch, but you know, there's no rev share pool or anything like that. It's a, uh, um, it goes directly to the artist. Um, and that unlocks certain benefits to the user. Um, things like those custom emotes, which are the custom emojis that the creator has created and can use both in that creator's channel, but also elsewhere, which is kind of a good marketing opportunity um, and a good way to get the word out about your Twitch channel to other communities. Um, second, we have um, what we call bits, which is our virtual currency, and you can cheer bits. So if you cheer 100 bits to an artist, they get a dollar. Um, and you can do anything as small as, you know, one cent um, USD to, you know, literally, you know, you see, you know, thousands of dollars in yeah. bit cheers, which is pretty amazing to see. And I think that's one thing that is just super special about Twitch, which, which we can touch upon is that the the amount of support that you can show for an artist is uncapped. Um, it, it literally, you can show as much support as you can. The other, um, uh, the other day, there was an artist, um, or not the other day, maybe it was a couple of months ago, but there's an artist named Autopilot. Um, he's in this amazing musician from Manchester um, in the UK. And, you know, he announced that he was going to, um, you know, he hadn't put out original music in a few years, but his Twitch community inspired him. And so, you know, he's, you know, not only was he just going to do live performances on stream, he was going to start creating music on stream as well. And, you know, in pursuit of creating a new album and, you know, you saw his community rally and, you know, one of his super fans dropped like a thousand dollars in bits, um, which great. was just, I mean, you, these are things that you don't see, like the mental model that I have is like, you go to a show, um, maybe, you know, you pay the 30, $50 for a ticket, uh, maybe you buy, you know, the $40 t-shirt at the merch table, and that's kind of all you can contribute to the artist. But here on Twitch, you can give a lot. Um, and and then the last kind of uh, bit, uh, or not, sorry for the pun, um, the last, uh, <laughs> the last uh, monetization opportunity is ads um, where, you know, similar to other services, you can run pre-roll or mid-roll ads on your channel, and then that revenue gets split with the creator. Now, on top of this, um, Jay, you had mentioned it, there's a bunch of social features kind of built on top of our monetization products in general. So with subscriptions, um, there's kind of two, you know, alternate paths to get subscriptions. Um, so one is what we call the gift subscription. Um, so if, you know, 10 people are in a room and I'm a super fan, I can literally give um, 10 subscriptions. I can buy 10 subscriptions for all the people in the room. Um, and yeah. you see that very I've regularly. Yep. And the, the beauty of it is, is that, you know, there's a lot of fans who are, are like, I like this artist, but I'm not ready to kind of do the commitment yet. But once you kind of get the benefit, um, you can kind of participate in those memes, you have the emotes um, and, and the benefits are unlocked. You know, what we're seeing is, is the likelihood that they'll resubscribe on their own dime um, goes up pretty exponentially from there. So it's kind of a good try it before you buy it. And then also the super fan gets the love because, you know, we, we show you so-and-so gave 10 gift subscriptions um, and that's, that's incredible. The creators take notice. They give kind of yeah. extra love, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And, um, and the community as well, you just engender that goodwill as well from the community as well. And we have um, 
a, a second social feature, which we call the hype train. So if a bunch of people are subscribing or donating bits, it triggers the hype train, which unlocks benefits for the whole community, which is in the form of, you know, additional um, emotes um, that are unlocked specifically for a hype train. If you hit specific goals, there's different levels that you can hit. And it just kind of gets the community going on, hey, we're doing this together, not just as an individual, but as a community um, really rallying around this artist. And, you know, artists tend to do things like, you know, I'm going to play the song that like, I really, really hate playing, but I will play it for you guys if, you know, we hit this certain <laughs> level or things like that. Right, right. Um, and then the last bit on subscriptions um, that's super special kind of being part of the Amazon family is um, there's a benefit called Prime Gaming. Um, so if you have Amazon Prime, you have Prime Gaming, and basically you have a free gift subscription um, that you can subscribe to a channel and the artist gets paid for that. Oh, and so, that's great. Yeah, well, that's that's I a knew pro that was around, yeah. but I didn't know the artist got paid for that. The that's artist great. gets paid for it. Yep. And so, you know, that's kind of one of those secret um, features that, you know, artists who are really, really um, savvy, you know, they will have, you know, either call out, you know, to their audience. If you have, you know, Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free oh, that's or, great. you know, they'll just have their bots do it. Um, so bots are, you know, basically, you know, chat bots um, in the chat, will, which will periodically spit out you know, promo messages through the artist doesn't have to do it. So things like, hey, here's my Spotify and Instagram links or, you know, subscribe to Prime or here's how you donate or get song requests or things like that. Um, so again, there's this just robust ecosystem of tools um, that yeah. allow monetization. And it turns out they work really incredibly well. Um, so I think what we're seeing, and this is just what's so exciting to me um, about Twitch and, you know, I've worked at various places within the music industry for a while now, and I just haven't seen monetization to the degree that I have. At oh, I haven't either. Um, yeah. And, it's you know, special. what we're, yeah, what we're, the, the kind of two um, big trends that we're seeing is, you know, we're tracking who's making real money on Twitch. Um, and so, you know, the cohort of artists who are making $25,000 or more, you know, through the pandemic, that's grown um, 1,635%. Wow. So it's 16 X um, and $25,000 in the music industry from music is a lot of money, especially sure when you is. consider streaming economics from, from one um, platform. Yeah. From one, one place. Yep. And again, th th what's even more exciting about that is that, you know, when we look at kind of that next level up, who's making $50,000 or more a year, the median uh, viewership for those channels is 183 fans. That's not a lot. It, 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 it's mind boggling kind of revenue. Yeah. It's, it's mind boggling because, you know, think about the tens of millions of streams you would need, you know, on a, on a video or music streaming service, like it's 183 fans, which to me, just like, quite That's honestly, doable. coming, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, but I think, you know, this is the change. It's the I quality think it, yeah. of the fan, not yeah. the quantity. Yep. Right. It, it is those super fans. And I think, you know, that goes to the conversation we had earlier about, you know, you have lots of fans on all these other services. The trick is, is how can you find those ones who are really going to be there for you, who really want to support you? Really engaged. Because, exactly. Yeah. Tracy, yeah. before, before we, yeah. we wrap up here, are there opportunities for artists to have Twitch help promote their channel, promote their event? Will, will Twitch make themselves available to, you know, co-produce, co-sponsor? I mean, obviously, Twitch through Amazon has an incredibly huge platform and a potential to reach an incredibly large audience. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways that we work um, with artists and just the music community at large. Um, so... Um, uh, you mentioned uh, our relationship with Amazon. So we did an integration with Amazon Music where if you link your Twitch and Amazon accounts um, through the Amazon Music for Artists app, um, then basically your live streams will show up on your Amazon Music page. And you know when you go live, it'll send notifications to all of your fans um, on Amazon Music and Twitch. Um, so you kind of get both audiences. So that's kind of one uh, good way where we're extending the reach. Um, second, you know, we're partnering with um, content producers all the time. So, you know, uh, folks like Rolling Loud, Rolling Stone, uh, Blackstream Live, 
um, Control Music, um, which is a red light uh, management brand. And basically, you know, we're working on content series um, that highlight, you know, both amazing artists, but also just the amazing interaction with Twitch specifically. Um, and, you know, what's, what's, what's really, really interesting, especially in this moment in time, we're starting to kind of blend the IRL, you know, in real life kind of live concerts with the digital experiences, because what we're seeing is, is, you know, at a festival, maybe you can bring 50,000, you know, people into Golden Gate Park for outside lands, but, you know, you can reach an additional two and a half million people, you know, if you extend it to Twitch. That said, you know, what we think is super special is when you have, you know, Q&A and interaction, and again, the audience can affect the outcome of what's happening. And so we're seeing those models as well, which creates a yeah. lot of opportunity, you know, for artists to just start to kind of build their community, yeah. get exposure to what Twitch actually looks like. One of my favorites was, um, uh, I think it was 2020, um, we did a, a program called Stream Aid, where we, I think we raised, yeah. you know, $2.7 million um, for, for uh, musicians um, affected by COVID. Um, Charlie Puth was on there and like kind of before he started performing, he was just like watching Twitch chat and he was like, oh my God, like this is amazing. And he got distracted by chat. Um, and it was that moment of like, oh, there's people actually here and you kind of get that feeling of live. So again, we're, we're going to continue to work on programs, you know, with uh, producers, uh, sorry, uh, promoters um, yeah. and kind of the music community in general to have yeah. a platform. And then, yeah. you know, we're always working. Um, uh, Twitch affiliate status gets you uh, the ability to um, uh, monetize um, with emotes and subscriptions and yeah. things like that. Um, but we also have a program called the Twitch Partner Program. Um, and so, you know, that's where we have a lot of opportunities as well to partner. So a great example is um, Megan Lenius. Um, you know, she's an artist who, you know, was on on Twitch and built her community long before the pandemic. You know, she was recently like highlighted um, on a, a, a Times Square billboard and things like that. So there's lots yeah. of opportunities. Well, that, that brings up a, a great kind of uh, point here. And that is, there's so many things to learn uh, about Twitch. Where can people go to find out more about the platform, discover some of the artists that are there, get involved? Where can and, they go? And, and, and to add to that, because this is yeah. what I was going to final yeah. question. Is there a good resource for helping the artist who doesn't have a team who doesn't have a tech staff Great question. Who, who barely knows how to use their laptop. Is there a good resource <laughs> where you can get a PDF, a book, something like that, that says, okay, here's the 10 steps that you need to do first to get set up. And here's what you need to do to then to get, become an affiliate. And here's, here's how you set up the chat bots. Here's how you do all of this because Twitch in general is sort of like Photoshop in my mind. There's a ton of incredible totally. features there, but you know, most people only know 10% of them and they don't realize there's 90% that you're not even looking at that could really help you. Yeah. So I have two answers for that. So first and foremost, we have a site, um, called Twitch for Artists, artists.twitch.tv. Um, so go there. That's where all of the resources are. You can learn about, you know, the equipment setup, the tech setup, you know, what software you need, that sort of thing. Awesome. You can learn about monetization and best practices. And we have a bunch of uh, musicians um, from Twitch kind of explaining like how it all works. So that's kind of the starter. The, the, the second kind of answer, and the best bit of advice I can give to artists is, go into the Twitch music community and go find artists that you, you know, really identify with, whether it's the format or the genre or whatever, um, you know, you enjoy as, you know, just a fan. I think the best way to learn Twitch is just be a part of the community. Cause I think that unlocks so many things. One, you yeah. can kind of get those ideas of like, Oh, what is this subscription thing? Or how do you do these overlays? Or, you know, it, it, what is this chat bot? And it starts to kind of unlock those questions um, that you may have on like, how do I do this super, super well? You can start to see kind of some of the patterns that musicians um, use that make their stream successful. So, you know, are they doing song requests? Are they, you know, thanking fans for either coming in or following or subscribing? You know, what are those thick characteristics? 
Um, and then being a part of a community can mean everything, right? You will find people who are extremely yeah. helpful, um, whether it's the musician themselves or kind of what I call our secret weapons, our mods or our moderators, um, people who are there to support uh, the channel, um, to kind of keep it safe, to help administer song lists and things like that. Um, mods love just being helpful because, you know, they're the ones who are often saying like, oh no, you need to use OBS and you need to use these plugins. And, you know, I'm going to set up the emotes or I know someone who does emote art and things like that. And so the best thing you can do is actually just become a part of the community yeah. as a viewer and a fan, I because that will unlock so many ideas. Yeah. yeah, I think that's great advice. Tracy, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, always a pleasure chatting with you and continued success with uh, Twitch and music. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. And I'm uh, looking so forward much. to chatting with you in, on Twitch. All right. All right. Take See care, you, Tracy. Thank you so much. See you guys. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value. Twitch, I mean, it's it's the hot thing right now. Yeah, I mean, it just keeps, and it keeps getting hotter and hotter. And you, you yeah. really, you know, if you're not there streaming, at least get on the platform and yeah, start check it following out. how other people are doing it. Yeah. And, and you'll learn from there and you'll go, okay, I, I can do that. I can create that. And, um, yeah. it's, it's not as difficult as it used to be to That's set right. up live streaming. Yeah. It's getting easier and easier. Yeah. There's, there's, there's third party software that just connects to your Twitch account and will stream to it. Um, you definitely need to at least be in the world of Twitch as a yeah. fan. Yeah, check it out. Get on the platform. I highly recommend Halocene. Um, if and Jay Gregory, Finding Elysium. If you want to go check out some really cool channels, but just go go explore Twitch a little bit and see for yourself how it works. And if you really want to read an interesting piece which talks to artists who are succeeding and making revenue on Twitch, check out that story we talked about. Um, it's called Twitch's Rockonomics. Um, by Will Page, who we recently had on the podcast. Just Google it, Twitch's Rockonomics. It'll come up. That is a fantastic piece all about artists and how they're finding success on Twitch. Yeah, and, you know, I would end with a little bit of homework here. If you've got a Twitch channel, send it to us. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, it. You know, we'll, 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 we'll share some of them, but I just want to, let's just see what you're doing on Twitch. You know, I don't care if you've only got one follower or 10,000 followers. Let's, not the point. you know, share it, send, send it to us in a comment and an email. Um, so we can go check out your Twitch channel and see what you're doing. Um, before we wrap up, just real quick, thank you to Hypebot, Bands in Town, DiscMakers.com. We greatly yeah. appreciate your continued monthly support month after month. It. it's so appreciated and of course if you are watching us on youtube hit that subscribe button follow us on spotify subscribe on itunes we are on twitch <laughs> every episode say. every week is being streamed to twitch now i will admit up front we're not doing it live live we're recording wow. this and then streaming Yet. it the next day um but we're getting there i mean we're yeah. we you know we're like you bands. We're taking the baby steps, learning this, getting our feet wet, figuring it out. Um, but we are there. So check out the Music Biz Weekly podcast on Twitch as well. Um, that's it, everybody. We, we're actually doing two, two episodes. Yeah, so two we'll good see, ones. We'll see you tomorrow.